imagine this. Raised in Washington, D.C. area and learning how to generate an income as a preteen because you're raised by a single mother while your father's incarcerated. As a teen, you lose your mother and you're forced to figure things out on your own. The guilt of the stress and broken promises as a son motivates you to turn to a better life. The reality of bills began to hustle and you found a gift in sales and business. You fast forward to today, you're the owner of multiple businesses and have a huge footprint in your community. Today's guest in person is me. This is the plug, people lending us game. I am the plug. I am the plug. I am the plug. I am the plug. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the plug, people lending us game. I'm Henry Crockett. I'm Andrea B. I am Nick B. Mm. And man, we want to bring you guys out to our very first show. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, the first episode. Let's man, do this. so baby. excited. Congratulations, everybody. I want to thank you both for being here. Uh, and that's what we're doing here. Like, we're on this show to give our audience game. Okay. We want to not only be able to provide information from ourselves through our experiences, mm -hmm. But we also want to bring on various guests who will be able to give our viewers an insight on different methods of success when it comes to not just the entertainment, but business and anything else that we can possibly lend game. And a great quote from one of my great friends, Shorty G. She wow. told us Shout that out to Shorty G. They call it lending game <laughs> because the game and information that we provide, we've got to be able to give it back to our viewers. Yeah. We so, gotta tell we gotta tell the audience who Shorty G is. We gotta introduce our Yeah, our, that's our like team. my sister. This is the first come on man, this is the man. first episode. We right, gotta right, introduce right, right, the right. team. Well Shorty G is the behind the scenes everything. The showrunner. I, I don't have the glue. Like she's the one that's gonna make who the show is be known. You can look her up. On Instagram, Shorty G is on fire. You can pull up her music. She's she got, got good music. On. Yeah. Always got good music. Overall, dope creative. Shout out to the Proximity Effect. Yeah. She won, she won a third of the Proximity Effect. Yes. Artist, showrunner. She's the glue to the <laughs> team. So we got to make sure that we give the, the roses while they do. Right. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and hold on. Who, who running the cameras, though? Oh, man. Who you making know, this look good, though? We're, we're directed Which, by Daryl. Okay. Daryl is behind the scenes got doing everything IGs, when it comes. Though. I mean, cameras, we, we want to play on cameras. There's, there's one, there's two, and Nick, go ahead and reflect for number three. <laughs> we got three cameras rolling here, and Daryl's got an IG handle too. We've got Daryl, we've got Kai, Shorty G, the combination. Follow us on Instagram, and you can follow all of our people that are directed and behind the scenes to the show. Word. Yes. I like that. But follow us at Plug the Show. Plug the Show, that's right. That's right. That's right. First episode, man. What we I'm what so we doing? Excited. So when we start a show, we want to let all of our audience know every time they come on. Obviously, the show is home based here in Las Vegas. <laughs> yes, we're sure. in the beautiful nightclub of Bloom. Yes, shout out to Bloom. Bloom uh, in Henderson, Las Vegas. Right Nevada. here in Henderson, Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, Henderson is Henderson, Nevada. Let's rewind though why Vegas. we chose this spot. The ambiance. Mm. Uh, great the food. The aesthetics. The aesthetics. You gonna, yeah, it's, aesthetics. Like, it, it's, it's all of that in, in, in combination. Like that. Also, the people involved. Antonio has been awesome. Daniel. Daniel's been the man throughout. And then, you know, everybody that's been a part of Bloom and shown us so much love, it would have been ridiculous for us to pick anywhere else. They've been receptive yeah. from the very beginning. So, shout out to Bloom again. Mm -hmm. The food is amazing. Taco Tuesday is mm, mm, mm. It's but, definitely worth that Uber ride off the strip to come visit them. Listen, if you're not... And if, if you, Cardi did it, you can do it. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. If you're but, not at Bloom, what are you doing? Right. Mm. Anyway. Now, now, Nick, every every week when we have a show, we want to get people to know, since our home base is Las Vegas, we want to let them know what the buzz of the city is about. Mm. Well, so that is going to be up to Nick and Nick being tell us. Well, we've been in the panty for the past year and a half. That's short for pandemic. Okay. So, you know, a city like Las Vegas is known for tourism. Understood. So, you know, the fact that we went a year and a half with no nightclubs, Ugh. no pool parties, mm -hmm. we, we got about a small percentage of capacity in the casinos. Mm -hmm. So that's really what's been keeping us afloat in dining. You know, dining, a place like Bloom, for example, right. is not only the aesthetics and ambiance, mm -hmm. 
but dining has been really keeping right. the city alive. A lot of people have been coming from out of uh, out of state to to patronize business here. Right. And so um, the buzz in the city is that the pool parties is back open. The clubs is about to start back open. <sighs> and one of the most poppinest clubs in the city is Dre's. Dre's Nightclub. Dre's yes. Nightclub is about to be open, bro. Right. So, you know, before we jump into the specifics on what Dre's is about to do, like how, you know, what are you looking forward to with Dre's being open? Do y'all think we back? Like we back, like Vegas back? Or oh. like what y'all think, what y'all anticipate? I feel like, I feel like coming out of this, it's, it's about like a confidence thing. You know what I mean? It's almost like, I feel like we have to manifest that we're back. You know what right. I mean? I yeah. feel like the more we stay in this pandemic mind frame, right. the longer we're going to be here. Right. You know, I mean, be safe. Like, don't do anything crazy. But like, I feel like we got to give the, the city energy and like give them the energy that we know Vegas has and show right. up and hang out and be at these pool parties and whatever and bring that energy back into the city. Because I feel like there's like a gloom over every city. You know what I mean? Yeah. For this pandemic. Absolutely. And I feel like, this city particularly like does well when the energy is up and yeah. like moving. That's what we know for is yeah. the pulse. Right. right. What you think, Henry? Well, I mean, I don't know if you guys went on a strip this weekend, but <laughs> well, <laughs> we are back. I mean, the, the the traffic's been crazy. Yeah. Obviously, uh, people weren't spending those stimulus checks. Mm. So with, I mean, I'm out there in Las Vegas. I'm down on the strip this weekend, and it was packed. Word. Like there was a, there was a lot of cars. Obviously, I got my nephew in town this week, so we just kind of been riding around. We went and rode some go karts at Word. the pole position. But while we were out there, we had to cruise down the strip, and it was loaded. And I mean, I actually had gotten a quote from one of the gentlemen over at Dre's. Hold on, you gotta say the name, bro. Oh yeah, Kenny Baker. He's one of the biggest hosts out here in Las Vegas. Shout at out Dre's. to Kenny Baker, man, the legend and in the city. Kenny Baker's what's quote. His, uh, what's his socials, though, before you go into the quote? Mr. Kenny Baker. So, yeah, if y'all know who Kenny Baker is or y'all don't know, y'all follow him at Mr. Kenny Baker on IG. The man is phenomenal in the city. We got to get roses while they do. But anyway, go to the quote. Right, and Mr. Kenny Baker said himself, Vegas nightlife is definitely back in full effect. There's still some restrictions, but reservations have been coming in faster than ever. Dre's pool and night swim open back up this weekend. Oh, hey, facts. I'm Major so facts. excited. Yeah, I mean, if it comes from Mr. Kenny Baker, then it must be factual. So, right. I mean, I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to it. You know, uh, I mm -hmm. think the city in general, we only got about 2 million plus people here. Right. So, you know, I'm sure the locals will come out. That's like a thing here in Las Vegas is you, you're, you're right. in the local environment. Right. And obviously the tourists have been coming. So, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. Y'all going to be out this weekend? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to find my way out. Like, I we, mean, you know. Again, and one of the reasons why we'll be out this weekend and almost every weekend is a segment that people will be able to follow us out with through our Instagram mm -hmm. is our access to plug. Oh, talk about it, bro. That's and, like, <laughs> tell, them, tell them what they are accessing when well, they watch Well, that. access to plug is where, obviously, the plug, plug team, we go out and we actually visit different venues throughout Las Vegas, whether it be not just the nightlife type aspects, but great restaurants, shows, clubs, and even individuals, people that the city need to know about. So when we access the plug, it's us actually accessing what's here in Las Vegas that you can find outside of just the standard nightlife or just the standard the strip, casino yeah. right. gambling. Yeah, that's so. huge. And that's the thing is, is like with the plug shows, we're bringing the voice to the culture. Right. There is a culture here outside the strip. Like right. I've been here for like five years. And, you know, coming to Vegas just as a tourist, I'm only on the strip. So when I finally moved here permanently, I'm like, yo, this Vegas got a lot of potential. Right. And it has grown tremendously since I've been here. You know, we got legalized cannabis. Correct. That's a big deal. I know Drea happy about that. And then we also, we got our sports team, our Knights. Our Las Vegas Knights hockey team has been balling out Man, the Golden season, Knights, right? shout out. So they've been doing yeah, Stanley they've been Cup doing the great. first year. Right. right. You know, and they keep making it back deep into the playoffs. Like, they're a force to be reckoned with. You know, not, our Las Vegas Aces does phenomenally. Right. Does exceptionally well. Mm hmm And then, you know. And we got a great football team. Shout out to the Raiders. Ra we got the Raiders. Right. A historical, dope franchise. Mm -hmm. So, we'll be supporting, the, you know, Las Vegas Raiders. And, Unless you know, fingers crossed. Unless they play in the Cleveland Browns. Or the Seattle well, Seahawks. Or the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> or the Washington Redskins. No, they're not the Redskins but anymore. The Washington football team. Washington, Washington football, football team. <laughs> <laughs> you know, listen, Shorty, listen. the Washington football team. Listen. 
They're forced to call it the Washington Football Team. But they'll always team. be the Redskins? Politically correct is not what I need to be. No filter. Washington Redskins. <laughs> That's real. Um, I can't throw away my that. shirts to say the Redskins. So the Washington football team may be what needs to be said on paper, but right. I'm a diehard Redskins fan. However, I do want to say that we should be able to lock in the same love for our Las Vegas Raiders. Oh, yeah, this home for us. Oh, this this is, home. is our yeah. home team, and we got to show the Raiders a lot of love. Yeah, the Raiders 100%. will get a lot of love from the plug, man. We, mm-hmm. we here for the Raiders. I mean, again, I love my city. I know y'all love y'all's, but Raider, the Raiders is the home team. You know, so, you know, I might switch up the top, you know, and, and rock some Raiders shit. I don't know. Let me see how I feel, man. Maybe, maybe when they come on the show, and then we Yeah, can. we got to get some Raiders. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm, I'm going to show the love. You know, we, we for the city. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I'm going to do it. And then my fingers are crossed for a basketball team. You know, my beloved Cavaliers, we finally got a championship with LeBron. Shout out to LeBron. I'm rooting for him in the Lakers, you know. But, you know, I love my Cavs the way I love my Browns. But if we get a basketball team, speak that into existence, I'll be rooting for them too. Oh, man. Because, you know, I can can rightfully root for the hockey teams. We have no hockey team in Cleveland. So, you know, I was rooting for the Red Wings. Shout out to Detroit. You know, because uh, we ain't had no team. Nick I does mean, a lot of shout-outs. <laughs> no, I mean, look, we got to get roses, but right. I'm, I'm, I'm for the Knights, too. So, you know, all the shout-out to all the home team. We're part of the home team. So, okay. you know, we got we to gotta rep, you know what I mean? Nice. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. Well, do we have any other buzz or anything else that we want to – what's another segment? Our other segment, we have what? Our flow and friction. Well, yeah, flow and friction. So, you know, of course, we, we, we local. We for the local market. So we talk about our – our buzz in the city will let everybody know what's going on in the city that we know about. And then, you know, we also talk about things on a national level because we, we are aware of uh, our popular culture and that's everything relevant. Understood. You know, so I think one of the biggest things that we need to touch base on, uh, especially with businessman swag in the building. Uh-oh. Uh, we, and we're we going to get into your, 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 your background a little later on in the show, but the STEMI. <laughs> the STEMI. Mm-hmm. Well, you you got to talk about the STEMI, man. It's a lot of jokes on the net right? with the STEMI. <laughs> yep. You I know. Mean, do, do you have a favorite? I don't. Do you? <laughs> I mean, this was his, like, I feel like this was, you were the one trolling all of these comments. <laughs> well, and- no, I mean, I was trolling because it was just popping up. But, I mean, the one where uh, somebody posted shows up to Target. Right. Yeah, ask for the big red balls outside. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> I was definitely see that one. Yeah. 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 Like, then, that was one of my favorite ones. And then I made up my own where I was saying, like, you know, people buy that $17 spirit flight, but your baggage fees is $1,323. So, <laughs> so you I just, mean, you moving on spirit when you got your STEMI check. You I mean, yeah, New you got to gotta pay for, you know, no disrespect to Spirit Airlines, but y'all need right. to get y'all, y'all shit sponsor together. Us. Man. Get y'all okay. shit together first, because we pay for breathing. I pay for a glass of water or right. a plastic bottle of water. I've never taken. Pay to use the bathroom. Have you actually, you've actually taken. I'll take Spirit to go from. <laughs> I'll take spirit to go from Vegas to LA. That's about it. Vegas and to and LA, you've done Vegas it. to and Phoenix. You've actually yeah, done I have. Yeah, have I mean, you? I got to get to where I got to go. I've flown to DC on spirit before. Listen, let it's me. It's never ex- happening over and, here. And let me explain. Never doing it. Financially, it had nothing to do with the financial. So you got to put it out there. Huh? Like, I can but afford. But I can afford the first. Class. So you was first but class on the spirit. I would fly, <laughs> no, no, there is. I don't even know if there was oh, the one. cockpit. Right. That's yeah, about you was in there with the pilot. I feel like if I stay Shotgun. up the night before, I stay up the night before, man, just put me in a seat, get me to the wall, for real, for real, yeah. five hours later, and I'll save my That's $600. I feel him, though. I'll save my $600 for dinner. Absolutely. Oh, I see what you did. Okay. I mean, it makes Sorry. sense. I mean, it teaches on, you know, I'm not knocking anybody. Okay, but I got a question, though. What? If you're flying a girl out, are you flying her on spirit? If you were single? I can't answer that comment, that comment right now. That ain't I, a question I, right now. I, I'm single, but uh, I don't people out too much. Would you put her on spirit though? No, I don't think that's respectful. I mean, she get here how she get here. She'll probably fly spirit. But <laughs> hey, not look, courtesy of me, but I listen, mean, hey. If y'all not feeling that, yeah. jump in the comments on the page on the plug yeah, show. How you feel about that plug the show on Instagram. <laughs> And y'all can go at, oh, on YouTube to fire off on Henry. Uh uh-uh, uh, I ain't riding no spirit. What's wrong with you? I didn't fly him there. She chose that flight herself, I would think. So you letting them know in the beginning, like, hey, just to let you know. <laughs> I found the best rates on spirit. No, I wouldn't mention that. No, I mean, to me. Are you going to send it to Convo? No, 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 listen. No, he's going to book it, and then he's yeah, going to get yeah, the yeah, rest. Confirmation to Convo. No, no, Here's no, your, no, hey, check no, your no, email. No. You got your flight. Not, uh, not, not, not that this is too spoiled, but I'm Southwest Bougie. 
Hey, listen, so, I rock look, with Southwest. How you rock with Southwest? Listen, before Man, Southwest. you get a flight, Southwest, we just planned in two weeks in advance. Listen, before Southwest, it was JetBlue. Low-key, JetBlue fell off, though. But they've come back. Have you done the first class? I haven't been. I I haven't even booked the Jeff JetBlue flight in like five years. Because their first class is legit. Yeah, I don't know. No, they they shit was lit when I got. I was like, oh, this shit is really a party. Y'all offering mad chips and dip in this motherfucker. Like, <laughs> three bags? I get three Just bags. Just give Nick snacks. I get right. more ginger ale. You know, because you got to settle the stomach on the altitude. It's like oh, I get three. Dude. Blue lights. It's like a party that much. It feel like bloom in there. Right. See, you see what I did? No, I get. Uh, it. But no, I mean Southwest is my joint though. Yeah, you know, I, I like Southwest just because if you you traveling with you know minors and I have two two beautiful kids, my twins and shit. So it's like, right. you know, I don't want to be tangling with a motherfucker because I ain't booked all the flights next to each other. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like there's no assignments. Yeah. You true. know, so of, of course. And the, like, no baggage fees too, right? Man, bags yeah, you can just do what you want on Southwest. Yeah, bags fly free and back. You know, if I fly somewhere, maybe my day will hop in the bag. Listen, they put oh, me on Jesus. the emergency row every time. Oh, you're six bodies and bags. Do you hear this one? Yeah. No, nah, anyway, I, I, I tried to glaze over that. Mm. But I, I literally, like, they, they put me in emergency row every time. Almost right. every time. Like 70% of the time. Oh, you're 6'3". We'll put you in emergency row. Right. No you're, you're cool with the... Yeah, just put me. Yeah, Would you yeah, prefer what? to be there or on the first row where there's like all the leg room? Like where do you prefer it's to be? It's tough, in man. Like because I don't like being in the middle at all. So I oh, can be yeah. on the aisle. I can never see the that. only thing is, is if I try to stretch my legs and the damn cart comes oh, out, I swear I get my knee right. banged out every time. So like the window is cool for me. Like okay. I can put me in the corner. I can lay my head to the side. And that that's that middle seat is 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 a nice. That's right. horrible man. for anybody. No. Nope. Yeah. With this being said, like one thing I want the audience to know is we also are really hip on what's going on right now. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's the best part about this show. Yeah. For those that don't know, we're shooting every week and we're putting the show out same time. So there's some information that's really been buzzing right now. What's up? That can really touch our flow and friction. I think you had it outlined for us earlier today. No, we was talking about the STEMI though, bro. We yeah, didn't keep I mean, it on the STEMI though. From, from a business standpoint, I think the STEMI conversation is important because those checks are coming, and if you're familiar with what's going on in politics, in which we won't talk too in depth about politics, right. but everybody wants to talk about how they get their money, right. direct deposit, or check. Mm. So, I mean, I, w- I would preferably like to stick on the STEMI conversation right. because that is popular, and people really need to know what they need to do with the STEMI. You right. know what I'm saying? They really need to know. So, like, you know, do you have some important facts about the STEMI, the STEMI checks what? being deposited and what they should do with them? Well, one thing I think people should do is they need to do additional research because the STEMI's a hidden agenda for those that may not realize right. that. Like, if you actually go online and you look up each bill, because when a stimulus is sent out, it's signed as a bill. Right. right. <clears throat> this bill doesn't only speak of the stimulus check, though. This bill right. talks about your taxes, mm-hmm. talks about things that you're going to write off for your 20 and 21 taxes. Mm-hmm. So, like, everything that we did for last year in 2020 for our tax filings has now changed in 2021, and they don't promote this. Right. You have to go in and do this research and find out exactly what has been hidden is not the quote-unquote hidden agendas right. that were passed out with the free money that they give us. Right. So the money that you've gotten isn't as free as you thought. Mm. It comes with some penalties that come down the road with taxes. And I'm not saying they're going to tax that money. There are other things that you don't get tax benefits for. Yeah. Um, various things for, like, things you can write off. Right. Mm. Whether or not you can write off now, if it counts, if you can write off travel, if food expenses <clears throat> and things for businesses count, um, before you can only write off 50%, now they cut back what you... Actually, in, in the case of food and beverage, you can write off more now. You now right. go from 25%, you can write off up to 100% of your food and beverage mm-hmm. um, on your business. But then there's traveling taxes and traveling expenses that have now decreased, right. so you don't right. get as much money from writing those things off. So people definitely need to do some research on exactly what they've taken away from us when they handed us those checks. And then, um, I mean, obviously I know when we get sitting down on the nitty gritty, we'll get an opportunity to really dig in deep. I know you guys will have some deep and dark questions for mm-hmm. me to kind of go into better answers for that. So, Did yeah. you guys get the stimulus check? I've never gotten a oh. stimulus check. Oh. Said, uh, He's too uh, balling. No, I mean, I wish. I still keep looking. And in fact, I did get a notice one time that I got like 200 bucks, but I can't find where they sent it. So I don't oh. know. Did you get it? Uh Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, keep, I usually keep my... my, my 
business. If y'all want to talk business, we can talk about it off camera. <laughs> Mr. Private over here. He and wants everyone me. else to be exposed and have That's all okay. their information on the no, table. No, you expose what you want to expose. You know right. what I'm saying? But you digging in. You, you don't count another man's pockets. You don't ask This is, the, but everyone either got it or they didn't. Hey, man, this is, I'm not asking you where your I paycheck is. Well, I mean, it ain't about no paychecks. We This is the episode of uh, Serial Entrepreneurialism. So, I mean, you're an entrepreneur. Oh, we're going we gonna to get into his details on a following you're, episode. I mean, yeah, you know, but you're an entrepreneur, right? I am. Exactly. He's a, a serial entrepreneur. So, For sure. You know, you know, I might be one as well. So, I don't want to put all my business out. I may or may not have gotten yeah. a check. Don't agree with him. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I was only willing to say me. I didn't because I'm bitter. Yeah, this ain't about it. <laughs> He's like, I'm so, you, you accumulating fourteen to sixteen hundred. You got you got many businesses we gonna dig into mm -hmm. later on. The government's in the show. like, we ain't giving you no nothing else. Yeah, yeah we ain't yeah, helping you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I could have used it though, but it's all right. And but, again, like if what I would you have used it on? Uh, for me personally, personally if I would have got yeah. it, I uh, probably would have put some money into maybe some higher education and something. Okay, so, you know, like that. How to invest it in some higher learning and. Possibly maybe some equipment. Obviously, when we with the music production, we right. might have uh, mm -hmm. upgraded some things that maybe Shorty G or Will or no uh, Nolan would have picked out and said we need to upgrade. But typically, it would have been something to invest back into one of my other businesses. So. Word. What about you? If you hypothetically <laughs> came upon some money, air quotes. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, same here. I think. We got to look at the long term. Okay. You know, we take fourteen to sixteen hundred, and y'all want to go buy. Not y'all, but people in general want to go ball out. You know, get sneakers, uh, which I'm not. I'm not opposed of it, right? You know, getting all of the high end stuff. And it's just like, yo, like look at the long term. You know, you're gonna. You, you can't factor in that money as money you depend on to pay a bill right, or to right. go ball out. <laughs> that money should be extra, even though you're entitled to it mm -hmm. if you do your research. You should be dumping that into something that is more productive, you know. Um, my my guy over here, we're gonna dig deep into his, to his business, but uh, insurance, life insurance, is right. something that I've been okay. deeply looking into in terms of cash reserve, life insurance, um, you know, businesses, anything, you know. Though that's where the money should be going. Cryptocurrency is huge, right. so you know you got to be talking about the NFT world. Uh, and crypto, cryptocurrency, you know, that's something that you should be dumping that money into and being being attentive to the stock market, obviously, as well. That's something in a the community of color mm -hmm. uh, don't often talk about, or at right. least in the past. I can't say about that in the present because my circles, that's all I'm hearing about. Right, right. So, Same. you know, I would say look to put that money towards that. But if you're sitting on a bunch of money and that money that you get is just play money, right. then yeah, go play with it. You know, I'm not right. gonna, I'm not that guy to be like, yeah, you know, put it in the stock market and you see me out at catch. You know, what I'm saying blowing fourteen hundred dollars on the tab. Fancy. I mean, catch is nice. I ain't I ain't promoting no 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 right. spots, but catch is nice. But I mean, you but, shouldn't uh, spend that fourteen hundred dollars on a bag and just why can he spend money on catch and I can't buy it on a bag? Well, what I mean in the well, that's sense play of money for play money so in the event of payment. When I say you. Up. I meant the audience who has that money for a need. <clears throat> Meaning, right. if my stimulus check is one fifth of what's in my bank account, I shouldn't be spending it on that's that's real. A, 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 some amenity. Like, you know, the, the average rule of thumb is you should have at least six months worth of bill hmm. money in reserve before you start playing that's with real. the money. Yes, that's real, yes, absolutely. And an emergency so. fund and everything. But that's why you're the businessman swag. But well, we're not going to go too, too much more in right. depth yeah, in this part of the segment. Right, you dropped all gems in this segment. You got to introduce the next segment. I know, this is about I'm that time. ready for a drink. It's happy hour somewhere. It's happy hour somewhere. Yeah. And this is something I want to do for, for my two co-hosts. Okay. Peace, and we're we going to take it to the bar. Okay. Yeah, we got to go ahead over to the Bloom Bar and continue our next segment. That's going to be something that's going to that's gonna be reoccurring Man, every episode, about right? That. Yeah, every excited. guest that we have on the show can look forward yeah, to this Yeah, we got to listen them up. Okay. Perfect. All right, well, let's conclude. I'm closing my laptop. You got me excited. <laughs> right. uh, hopefully, it's a non-alcoholic beverage for me. Oh, right. right. I guess I'm the boring one. Nah. nah. <laughs> You guys know that I love a little cocktail, and I feel like with all our guests, we should start them at the bar before we bring them to the couch. Okay. Makes sense, makes right? sense. Right? I feel like we want to get them loose and like have them talk a little bit more, you know, about their life, you know, outside of the business stuff and things like that. Right. And you guys know that I have some bartending experience. I did it for a few years in college. Okay. So I wanted to make us a plug drink, okay. our signature drink. I like it. 
but I know you don't drink, so I made you some mocktail. I like it. Let's go. We're I'm gonna talk it. about that, by the way. I'm with it. <laughs> the mm -hmm. plug. Mm -hmm. Can we call it the plug? You think we, we gotta call, call it the plug? plug. Yeah, we, gotta we gotta call, call it the plug. plug. Let's Absolutely. see what this looks like. Yours, yours, and yours. Perfect. What's in it? So it's an old fashioned. Okay. Because we know some people like dark liquor. <clears throat> True indeed. And but it's with reposado because you know I like tequila. Okay. So I feel like it's a good meat. It's in the a middle. good meat in the middle for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then yours is you know your special drink. Right. <laughs> well, I like it. Definitely. I taste it. It tastes good. Definitely. Well, I taste it. Well, shoot. Okay, yeah, wait. Cheers. We gotta catch up. Cheers. Cheers. Up. cheers. 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 All right, All so right. what do you think? I love it. Yeah, it's yeah? really yeah. good. It's smooth. Happy hour somewhere, so. I know. Yeah. And we'll let like the guests too, like I want them to come and create with me and have like their own little signature drinks. So right. we'll get them started with their own, but I feel like for us, this is gonna be our, our go-to, our plug. Perfect. Right, perfect. And I yeah. like my mocktails. Is Sprite? Uh, yeah, I think yours is mixed with Sprite. Oh, that's okay. awesome. Yeah. Well, say less. Let's get Henry back on the couch. And, and continue I know, we got interview. some stuff yeah. to get into. Okay, Put I'm you ready. on the hot seat, brother. Ooh. Let's talk it out. <laughs> All right. Let's toast one more talk time. One more time. All right. Plug. To the plug. Hey. hey. Here we go. Okay, so listen. You need told you to drink I was gonna your drink. That's a bad luck. I just want to jump straight into it. I know, best bad luck. Okay, my bad. I was like the first one to drink it at the bar. Anyway, look, we told you we was gonna put you in the hot seat. Mm -hmm. Come here. So early we were talking about the STEMI, right? Ways to invest it, and you know, with your background, which we're gonna cover, in, you know, in a few minutes. Like honestly, my <laughs> thing is, is this. You're a businessman. You go by <laughs> businessman so swag. I had to. I had to. You're the businessman swag on mm -hmm. IG, right? Right. That's so true. let's go backwards, bro. Let's talk about your origins, right? We got to talk about where you come from <clears throat> leading up to how you became a serial entrepreneur and businessman that you are today. All right. That makes sense? No, I'm with it. All right, let's do that. So, like, where where all started? Started in D.C., right? Yep. Originally okay, from swag. the DMV area. Uh, spent some years in Washington, D.C. and Prince George's County. Pretty girl county. Okay. Cute. Um, here you go. Went to oh. high school out there um, as a child. Obviously played sports, was involved in things like that. Then at age 16, my mom passed. Um, obviously the loss of my mom transitioned me into a different mode because at that point I was kind of forced to kind of, in essence, learn how to raise myself. Um, in a lot of ways, you know, I lived with an aunt for a while, but I paid rent. You know, 16 years old paying rent, so you had to find out early how to make an income. So. For me, it was just baby, more or less my mouthpiece. My school didn't know my parents had passed away, so I basically had to find ways to just kind of finagle myself through high school and through my day to days just with the information that I'd already known. So um, just being able to kind of communicate with the masses without being obvi obviously of age and things like that, I was able to kind of just develop a mouthpiece to kind of transition to an opportunity for me to then, working in Washington, D.C., to Turning 21, <laughs> uh, I met my dad at age 19. He was in Las Vegas. So I flew out tw two summers to come visit him. Okay. Uh, the first trip was a week. He pissed me off. I booked a flight, went back home. He didn't <laughs> even know I was there. He called my aunt to find out if they heard from me, and I was the one who answered the phone. Hello? He was like, oh, you're upstairs. I'm like, no, I'm in D.C. Wow. And he was like, what? But anyway, uh, the second time around, my brother, he was kind of pushing me. I was like, man, you should take the opportunity. Just get away from here. Things were getting crazy in D.C. We were losing friends. Um, so I made the transition. Obviously, I was in sports, so I made the transition in the Las Vegas. I got to Las Vegas in 2000. Um, I was sponsored here. So my sponsors had put me to work at their car dealership. Um, what do you mean by sponsors? Uh, they were paying me to, for my athletic abilities at the time. What, so, yeah, you what kind of – yeah. Yeah, uh, so when I first uh, got here, I was involved in boxing. Okay. Um, and – at that point, so I got into the car business. I uh, was working in the car dealerships. And from the car dealerships, I grew into sales, from sales into like internet management, from internet management to finance, finance to sales manager. And um, was blessed to have a daughter. Uh, she had moved to California. And at that point, when I wanted to visit her, it was the weekends. But as a sales manager, you can't take off on Saturdays. Right. right. So what I had to do to transition that was, and I don't know what made me say this, but I looked my own bosses in the face at the time and said, you know what? I can make $9,000 at home. And I don't know why I believed that or thought that that was possible, but 
I felt that I was going to have to figure out how to do it to be able to see my kids. So I left the car business and started, you know, personal businesses of my own. What was the first personal business? <laughs> first one. Oh, yeah, brother. Got in the high seat. The first business was a matchmaking company. Oh. Okay. Actually, no, I'll take that back. The first business was a screen printing company, printing T-shirts. We did the Obama campaign. Okay. We did over $20,000 during the, the Ob- okay, Obama the first campaign. One? Yep. It okay. was called V4O. They were shirts that just basically had different acronyms of V4O over the shirts, but it was kind of like the hidden secret acronym. V4O stood for Vote for Obama. Vote for Obama. Um, so you could wear it in a political office and nobody knew where you're, that it was a political stance because right. you just saw V4O. Right. Um, so we were able to pull over $20,000 <laughs> in revenue over T-shirts during that process. Wow. Um, but yeah, then the, the next lucrative Yeah, let's one get into the matchmaking. Was, uh, I started a matchmaking company. Mm-hmm. So you was the tender. So you were the tender with no uh, No, he was the pan. Oh, no, nah, th- 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 those are bad words. I wasn't <laughs> into that. I was, was uh, <laughs> no, not at all. No, but <laughs> explain to us how, like, did you, like, how and why? So here's where it started. <laughs> I'm on a plane reading a business magazine while I'm going to visit my daughter, and it says, one of the top ten booming businesses in the country is matchmaking. And I thought to myself, shit, Smart. I could do that. I know, how to, I know how to hook people up. I know how to meet women. So in that process, we create, I created a business. I mean, the, the status of businesses is about, you know, finding a problem and finding a solution. Right. And for right. me, the problem in Las Vegas was people finding legitimate, real dates. Right. I mean, Connections, you can yeah. get hooked up in Vegas anytime you want. But True. finding a relationship that seems like it has some stability was difficult. So mm-hmm. I was like, man, I'm going to be that guy. So I used to have an office on Valley View. It was okay. called. Go ahead. What was yeah, it called? Reveal. I was like the faces. <laughs> the right, faces. Right, right. It was called Assorted Flavors. Okay. Um, I mean, look. What year, <laughs> what year was this? This was 2009, 2010. Yeah, because you, you had been. That's is that the first time you moved? That's when you first moved to Vegas. No, I moved here in 2000. So, so this you moved was in 2000, right? Ten yep. years later. So okay, it, it fits. And, and our theme song was Craig David's "What's Your Flavor." Oh God. And uh, <laughs> right. So, but with, but with that, I mean, we were we were really matching up clients, though. We were bringing people in um, and allowing them, obviously, to not only just find a date, but we would, we would interview our client. That's what I was going to ask, did you do right. the whole process? Yeah, right? no, this wasn't Tinder, and, and I'm so pissed, because now you know as time evolves. Had we made an app, I would have destroyed the dating world, because we did well from in person, but our prices were expensive. You right. Know? Right. It was sixteen hundred dollars for our top package. And I for mean, but they was paying. This is Vegas. They'll pay right. for that, right? And people yeah. were paying, and we were finding legitimate dates. But in this city, we were getting harassed a lot by mm-hmm. people wanted to find out if, uh, you know, if they could solicit a female through us, right. mm-hmm. which you couldn't. And having a daughter and that pressure, I decided to kind of walk away from that opportunity. Smart. So. Man. Another time on a plane. That's why I travel so much now, because I always find luck when I'm on a flight. Um, I saw a lady with a, her face on the back of a book, which was a matchmaking book. And I was like, is that your book? She says, yes. I told her I owned a matchmaking company. She flew to Vegas, evaluated it, and she wrote me a nice little hefty check to sell the business. So wow. I did. Uh, I then took that money and uh, transitioned into insurance, Okay. Um, which I've now been doing for over. All insurances, right? Yep. So uh, in insurance, we sell health. Yeah. Homes, uh, financial advising. We do life. We do autos. Um, but as I did that for the next eleven years of my life, I then took that money and the money that I was able to accumulate and kind of started other little various things. Um, started a music label with my brother. Word. What's it um, called? Style and hustle. Mm, okay. Style and hustle. Shout out to Proximity Effect. They out there somewhere. Word. Um, in addition to that, I then. You know, I've got a hookah lounge that we're working on out of state. Out of state. Um, in addition to that, I have a a game center okay. that we're trying to break ground for here in Las Vegas. Word, that's big. That's awesome. big. Um, yeah. And then I launched an app. That's the one. I'm like, I did something else, but I own a sports tracking app. Name? East Stats Sports. Shout it out. Um, basically, what that is, it's an app that helps kids be able to have their stats tracked real time. That information is transitioned to the family and the audience right there on real time on the spot. So when a coach is putting in the information, the parents know exactly the stats of their child right now, instantly, and then they can follow their career. So it's wow. been doing well. Hopefully the city opens up like like we talked about earlier. Hopefully the city stays open so then this year will be a good year for us. But Yeah, we need sports back Las Vegas. Right, 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 right. We did pretty well, but 
I mean, and this is where I'm here today. And then last but not least, I, I met two great, amazing people. And we, put, to us. And, and we put together something that we have here now for our community, which is the plug. So, um, and at this point, I'm, I'm a serial investor. So if anybody has a good idea, something that makes sense, I'm with it. As much as you invest in things and you're in a lot of different verticals, do you also have a passion for all these things? Or is it really just like you see the numbers and the money and like that's, that's why you invest in it? I mean, my passion is sales. Okay. Right? So for me, if you got a product, I'm with it. I don't, I'm not really amused by any specific product. If the product's a house, a car, an uh, entity, or whatever, I want to be able to have my hands on it and have the ability to be able to sell it and know that we can sell it to the masses. Right. right. So, so for me, that's that's. it doesn't matter what the product is. Put me in a position to sell it where I can talk to people, yeah, and I'll run with it. Word. Mm -hmm. That's dope. So, I mean, obviously, like, with the uh, East Ass Sports, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that I wanted to touch on that one just because that's big, you know, being anybody that comes from a sports background, uh, the recruitment process to get to the next levels is always difficult if you're not the star. You right. know, like I come from a background where I've experienced that. So someone like myself sees an opportunity to have that app present. Should I had a or I had a, had an app like that present back in the day, then, you know, because I, I graduated with 3.6 in right. high school. So. So you that know, was huge. Scholar, yeah, and, and I was a pretty good athlete. So, you know, but I didn't have anyone campaigning. So it sounds like from this mm -hmm. app, you right. have people, you have a system that's campaigning for your success to get to the next level. Right. Well, specifically that's specifically collegiate. And the good news you brought that up because that's actually phase three now. We actually okay, have 110 right. colleges that we at least have an adaptive to, mm -hmm. and we're building up a back page for them <clears throat> to be able to access the information like as a as a recruitment hub. Mm -hmm. So. Right now they have to search the information on their own, but real soon we'll have an element into the app where it'll be for recruiters, where they can log in and find their top profiles. Yeah, that's major. So awesome. that piece is gonna be huge. And then I've got some good connections with some guys here in Las Vegas. Uh, David Hill, he's out there. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he's got the connections with the coaches already as well. As well. So mm -hmm. he's helped us link with a lot of those people, so. That's good. I mean, so are you gonna, are you ever gonna venture away from the insurance business? Because it seems like that's been very successful for you and, and very lucrative at the yeah. same time. So, I mean, obviously, if you're doing things in sports because you're also a coach. Right. Right. So are you going to venture away from that? Because I feel like those two things could go hand in hand. Well, that's an important piece. Well, first and foremost, I, it's almost would never venture away from insurance due to the fact that, number one, I've got a great staff and a great team, and I still get to talk to people. Like, I, I enjoy the customer relations aspect. I like when right. people, customers can reach out to my phone mm -hmm. and talk to me. And my team is uh, well enough inside the office that they can catch me up on what the details might be of that situation. I may hear the problem, defuse it, pass it back to my team, and they complete whatever projects need to be taken care of. But it's residual income. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me to ever drop a residual income opportunity yeah. and just walk away from that income, I would be it would be foolish on my part because uh, all I have to do to continue to get a check is keep the people that have trusted me to get insurance, keep them happy. So Right. Uh, I would never do anything to piss them off, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep insurance and keep that piece riding forever. What do you do when you're not, I mean, you're doing so many things all at once. What do you do when you're not working? I uh, <laughs> put him on the spot. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Well, mm -hmm. What do you do? How do you let your hair down? I wish I would say I'm never not working. Like anybody who knows me personally, like even when I travel, or mm -hmm. if I'm, but traveling is what I do. Okay. Um, but when I'm out of town or I'm out of state, uh, people still see me. I'm always in my phone. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to catch me just really putting my phone down, but I enjoy being in my phone at the same time. But I know how to unwind. For me, unwinding is uh, new space um, and meeting new people. I'm always out meeting people. Like I don't, right. I don't, I don't need a lot of alone time. I meditate already naturally, so I get my peaceful time every day. So I do a daily meditation, and um, yeah, my downtime is trying to be traveling. Or being with my family, right? Visiting my daughter, seeing my brother. I got my nephew in town this weekend, which has hey. been amazing. Um, so just stuff like that. For me, that's the unwind time. It's just showing my family that there's better things out there for us all to do in life. So inspiring. I think you're doing an amazing job, bro. But before we conclude the show, you know we, we the plug, right? So if you could leave the audience or the viewer with something as it pertains to growing their business and being a serial entrepreneur, what would be something that you would leave them with? Um, if I was to tell somebody, anybody that's looking to venture into 
first thing and foremost is don't be afraid to take a chance, right? You got to take risk in order to find success in business. I would think the first risk that anybody should want to take is you got to bet on yourself. I know we talked about the stimulus packages earlier, mm -hmm. and that's a perfect example. That money, if you got that money and you had an opportunity, those that haven't spent it yet, clearly, um, <laughs> invest that money back in yourself, right? Like I could think of any passion people might have. If you want to be a photographer, buy yourself a new camera. If you want to be a, a musician, buy yourself some musical equipment or buy yourself a studio kit or whatever those things. Invest in yourself so you can use that money to do something you love to actually earn a check. So the biggest thing with trying to make money in a business is find something that you have a passion for, that you're going to constantly be involved in and it doesn't feel like work. Because we've all had a job we worked at. Right. Like I've worked before too. Um, believe it or not. <laughs> but, um, but with working, I realized that I wasn't doing it for myself. I've walked away from three jobs because of the fact that I felt like I was helping somebody else get paid and mm, I didn't like that person. Real. Right. Mm. And I'm like, bro, Took it I'm helping you make more than me. Right. Yeah. No. Can't do it too, I, too So, long. So for me, it turned into a point that, you know what? I'm going to take my talents and utilize them to try to make myself an income and then offer other people opportunities as far as employment. And then by doing that, obviously taking care of your employees, they stay with you. I mean, I, I'm good to everybody that's around me, so we don't have those issues. But back to the, the question at hand, I definitely would tell people you got to find a way to take that money, invest in yourself, and then you have to go out and do the research. Whatever it is you want to do, you don't want to try to win too much. Right. Obviously, there's some improv to things like maybe this show, but I, we still each had to do some research on what it is we wanted to do, try to make this successful. And then when you put all of that together, I think you look back and you find yourself that um, people will back you when they see that you have the energy and the belief that you can make it happen. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I think it's exerting the energy that shows that you want to find success in whatever it is you do. And I mean, that's with anything. So. Right. I'm not telling anybody in America to quit their job. Right. Um, <laughs> not during these right. times. Yeah. But, but what I will tell them is, is um, if you sleeping a lot and you spend wasting a lot of time on Instagram and just doing things uh, friendly and funny to kill time, like you should only be tuned into stuff like the plug to learn a little bit of ah, information. I see what you did. Right? I see what you did. I like that. You should spend that time did. learning mm -hmm. something and uh, add, adding some game to your life. But just swiping through a bunch of photos and liking people sometimes that. That's a lot of downtime that we can utilize to try to enhance ourselves. And right. Regardless how many hours you work in a day, it's 24 of them. <laughs> we shouldn't spend one third of it sleep. Right. True. Let's find out, you know, ways to find success, man. And right. again, that's what this is really all about, man. I mean, I'm glad you guys were uh, courteous enough to be <laughs> two of the most amazing co-hosts I could ever find. <laughs> Um, that's but that's what the plug is, right? This is us trying to lend the world game. Mm -hmm. Some of the guests we'll have on the show will be amazing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Not um, some, all. We yeah, definitely don't pack the show. But yeah, There's all of the guests. guests. But when I mean that, I mean names that people will mean. really yeah. fall loving and recognize. And hopefully in time, they'll love us just as they've loved everybody else. But really, we're just here to lend them people game, man. Oh, people wait, where, lending where do you were speaking game. about social? Where can people find what's next for yeah. you aside where, from where the plug did, outside right. of plug the show right um everything with me is businessman swag it doesn't matter like what social media handle i'm businessman swag through everything from clubhouse to instagram <laughs> to right. facebook um and again henry crockett you can look up one of the two i am googleable okay oh, uh you oh, know you know <laughs> since that's my new pickup line what man Google me. Oh, no, I'm okay. just playing. Look I don't, me up. I don't, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, right, right. with that being Look said, like, I mean, people can just find me. I'm here in Las Vegas and... And around the world. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> right. Well, cool. look, my... my my glasses get a little it's empty. It's time for a re -up. It's definitely it's time, time for, for a re-up of the plug drink, for well, sure. Okay. I'll so, pretend like I'm buzzed. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheers, brother. Cheers. cheers. I am the plug. I am the plug. I am the plug.